there folks, welcome ye all to vlog 180. <laughs> yes, you see, I had to do that. I had to throw the darts joke in, people. Yes, I did. Another Friday has caught up with us, people. Yes, it has. And we are back in vlog country again, people, rather than podcast. I found it very comfortable down here last week. I was having quite the nice time. <laughs> I think now that the... Uh, now that the the sun's coming out and spring's kicking in, it's uh, I don't know. It, it feels a bit more like I've got the sun coming through the from the garden on the other side here all the way through, which is probably why the lighting is going to be all over the place because I've got sun coming from the back, sun coming from the front, and I've got the main lights on in case it all gets dark really quickly. But flagons up to you all, people. We do have much in the way of gaming to talk about. Well, little snippets of things that I've sort of picked up on through the week, trailers I've seen, news I've seen. Just little bits here and there, so it's going to be a general chinwag about the gaming stuffs again. My week's been my week's been okay. I've just cracked on with with work again. My, my, anyone that watched last week's vlog, my back has eased up a bit now. It's still kind of on and off, niggling at me, but it's been nowhere near as bad as it was over a week ago. So I managed to get a run in on Wednesday, and I've given it a few days just to settle a little bit. And I'll probably do another run on Sunday, I think, and then get my get my running back up and going. Recording wise, I have done. I've still done a fair bit. I, I mean, it's it's interesting that I feel like I've not done as much for you as uh, I was I would have liked. But <laughs> as it happens, I've done quite a lot. I mean, you've had you've had a video or two videos depending on the day. But up until now, I've been doing quite a lot of two dip two videos a day. But we didn't manage to do any Skyrim this week, but I did manage to get up a big lump of... Well, since the weekend, I've got a big lump of Phoenix Rising up and a big lump of Fallout 4. Another three Fallout 4s with the FPS boost on. Boost! <laughs> boost! Sounds like a fish row dart, doesn't it? Boost! Uh, so yeah, I've managed to get those up. You've got another Fallout coming tomorrow, and then I'll need to do some more recording on Sunday onwards. So I think first port of call will probably be some more Skyrim on the PS5, followed up with, I don't know, probably some more Fallout 4 or some, whichever way around I decide to do it. To be honest, it usually ends up being whatever it takes my fancy on the on the day, rather than picking and choosing. I think what I might start doing is, rather than when I record three and then post them all up each day thereafter i think what i might do is leave a day's gap between the episodes i mean you guys can let me know what you think a lot the problem is i think a lot of you look forward to the next episode on the following day but i think on the opposite side of that i think there's quite a lot of people that don't manage to keep up with so much content when i'm putting up two videos a day and they're every day every day and so i don't know whether it's actually probably good practice to to leave a day's gap between the episodes of things if i'm only doing three at a time so for example you would get you know uh say a, a skyrim one day and a fallout the next you know but with you know but uh a phoenix rising thrown in or something else i mean if i start doing that it might actually lend itself to me grabbing a fourth game at this point in time i've got a massive itch and i keep mentioning it and you guys keep saying you want it is Dark Souls 3 to continue that Dark Souls 3 and 60 frames per second on the PS5. My problem is I want I do want to keep a balance between the Series X and the PlayStation 5. And at the moment, we've already got two PlayStation 5 games on the go and Fallout 4 on the Xbox. So I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to have a think about it. It's possible. Dark Souls 3 I can always come back to at any time, really. And it's possible I should come back to it maybe once I'm done with Immortals Phoenix Rising. And if I'm going to pick up a fourth game to, to balance those every other day episodes out, maybe it could be something like Kingdoms of Amalur or you know one of the other Let's Plays we were doing before. I kind of cut back a little bit. I say cut back. <laughs> Two videos a day is enough for any man. You know what I mean? Flaggings up, people. I'm going to have a sip of this. So I've had quite a good week. I had actually planned to do some more recording yesterday to, to see us over the weekend, but I already had a fallout for for tomorrow anyway, and all of the well the Scotland game is on people. You know what I mean? Come on, you Scots! And oh what a game it was as well. I mean, Jesus Christ, we know how to do it the hard way, don't we? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Austria aren't an easy team, but they're by no stretch of the imagination the top end of the tier. 
So if we're going to qualify for things, those are the sort of teams we have to either take a point from or at least, you know, at least a point at home and hope to get the same away. And, you know, I felt like we did all right in the end. We didn't we didn't threaten them much in the first half up until quite late on in the first half. We started, I mean, we could have done without half time, to be fair. We were really starting to push them. But it was, we went 1-0 down, then we went 1-1, then we went 2-1 down. And the, the second goal, the overhead kick, was just like, come on now. <laughs> come on, muck Brazil. <laughs> so I was delighted with the point in the end. But three points would have been better, obviously. But, you know, hey, here we go. So we can fancy Denmark and Austria possibly to take points off each other. I'll have more of a, I'll have more of a, sense of how I feel like this <laughs> this campaign is going to go after we play Israel on Sunday because Israel I think have beaten us the last number of times they've played us and they are they're pretty lively Israel as a team so I'm hoping I'm hoping we can get a re- good result out of that game but if we can't beat Israel we're never qualifying you know what I mean this is not a tough group Denmark Austria Israel uh, who is the other two the two little ones is it Faro and Moldova or I don't know there's two two smaller teams that we should be taking all the points from but if we can't qualify from a group group like that then we frankly don't need to, we don't we won't deserve to be there really you know <laughs> because by the time you get to the finals you're going to be up against a lot tougher competition than that Denmark look good though Oof, blimey I was watching their game and they do look good I have to say they've always kind of you know they had that brilliant team in back in the the 90s wasn't it that Denmark team with the Laudrups and Schmeichel and Gold and all that malarkey. Well, they've got Schmeichel and Gold now, to be fair. But they are looking rather good again, has to be said. Anyway, of all the groups we could have had, it's a really good one for the World Cup. So, you know, we'll see how we go, people. Anyway, we do have a number of gaming things to talk about. And there was a topic, actually, that this was just going to be a random chit-chat. And then there was kind of this thought I had later on today about why is this not happening I'm kind of confused you know so I'm going to talk about that so I think uh, I think what I'll do is I'll rattle through the the bits that have piqued my interest and then I'll leave that topic till last in case I go off on a tangent it could be that I only talk about it for a couple of minutes but you know <laughs> you never know but you know what I'm like people you know what I'm like one last sip before I get going you know I would offer you one if I could, people. You know this. You know I'm that kind of person. Right. So what do we have? So, well, actually, before we go any forward, uh, go any further on with this, the particular vlog, let me remind you all, in case you forget, that in this country, in the in the United Kingdom, <laughs> The clocks go forward, people. Spring forward at 1am on Sunday morning. The clocks go forward an hour. So just in case you forget and you wake up for work on Monday and you're an hour late. (laughs) There you go. You've been warned, people. There you are. PlayStation VR 2 is on its way, people, if indeed that's what it's going to be called. But it's all starting to leak out now that they are on the brink of of announcing and launching all sorts of new PlayStation VR, you know, better versions of it. I think one of the biggest problems with PlayStation VR was that it was just too many cables. Like if you look at the if you look at the competition on, you know, the Oculus Rift and all the other ones for the PCs, they've all come on leaps and bounds with minimal cables and stuff. If any cables, I think it's a new Oculus not got any cables at all. I can't remember now, but they are pretty, uh, they're, 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 they're kind of really far ahead. They cost a lot more, to be fair. But I think people love the PlayStation VR. Uh, but the thing that's always put me off is I can't be bothered having cables everywhere. I mean, it's going to take me enough getting used to to have something strapped to my face. <laughs> Like a bloody alien hugger while I'm playing. But I've, I have tried out the Oculus Rift when I went to a, an event here in Blackpool, uh, uh, an expo. Play Expo, in fact. Play Expo Blackpool. And it was brilliant. It's my only experience with VR, and it was absolutely incredible. It was just, you know, it, it was mind-boggling. But it was still in that phase of, like, you felt like you were looking through binoculars. And until... I think until it can be, I mean, maybe this has changed and I haven't used the PlayStation one, but until it can change so you're getting one image rather than feel like you're looking through a set of binoculars, then, you know, that might have moved on 
I haven't tried them, so it may well be that that's the case now that they're, they're not like that anymore. But it was a fascinating thing, and it, you're immediately immersed into like Jesus Christ, you know, just amazing stuff. It really is. But it's I couldn't sit for hours and hours and hours with something on my head like that, you know, especially at the weight these things are at the minute. I mean. It's no wonder the games that come out for them, I don't think, are particularly long. Although, I think you can play Skyrim and stuff on them, can't you? So, But yeah, I mean, but the biggest thing, the biggest thing was the cables. Like, I don't want to have cables everywhere and, you know, uh, so I think the new one, by all accounts, is, is has got one cable, by the sounds of it, that just plugs into the USB. If that's the case, then that's absolutely amazing. I mean, no cables would be fantastic, but I think, I mean, that's, that's probably, probably the next hurdle for psvr 3 perhaps but yeah one cable is fine you know stick them on slap the cable i mean that's no different than having a, a headset on is it you know what i mean so for my liking that's absolutely i, I mean while well, i say that but i'm trying to think do, do does the the vr isn't doing sound is it so you still have a set of it, headphones if your headphones are wireless though i mean it's only the VR you've got plugged in there. So I think that's fantastic. If it's down to one cable, I mean, I might get seriously tempted with PlayStation VR 2 if, or PSVR 2, it, by, you know, this time come Christmas, if, if that's come out and it's only got the one cable and it looks dead easy to use and there's some, a good game lineup for it, I think I'd be well into having it just for the sheer trying it out. I don't know how I would share that on the channel. I don't know if I could. I mean, you... <laughs> I mean, the only thing that would change is you would see the picture and possibly me and a camera with a bloody PSVR hugger on me face. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to be able to experience it without all the faff. And I think that's what the PSVR 2 looks like it's going to do, if they call it that. Uh, also, they showed, I think there was a picture of some, oh, if I can find the image, I'll, I'll post it. But they there was an image of the controllers, which looked really cool. It's almost like a dome thing going over your hand and stuff. It was, it was really, really slick and nice. I really, really liked it. So that's exciting stuff. That seems to be on its way. What's my place there? PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PSP Store. The store for all of those things is closing. Which is a really interesting one, because there's a lot of games on the PS3 and probably the Vita and the PSP as well, actually, that you can't play anywhere else or or anything. So where are you going to play that, get that, buy those games? Like, it's just crazy. Like, I mean, this is where Microsoft have been really clever with the back and pat system because the back and pat program lets you... It, it keeps the whole... The ecosystem alive, for want of a better phrase, because it really isn't one. The ecosystem for... 360 and the original xbox and you know the games in the ecosystem for those older consoles are now al alive forever as long as they keep that back compat system going but playstation are still all right they've back compatted the ps4 that's great uh, that's fantastic i get it but there are so many games on the ps3 specifically that just aren't playable anywhere else and well playstation now would be the only place to play them and that's a streaming way of playing so you'd have to be connected to the internet and streaming and paying for that service now i mean it does raise the question as to whether or not they have come up with something to replace this to you know have they come up with some backward compatibility thing that we've not heard of yet my gut is telling me that no that is not the case they just don't want to support them anymore because there's just nobody on a ps3 that's worth supporting that for the few people that are still using a ps3 i think they'll think well no one's going to buy new games for the PS3 anymore, so we'll just get rid of it. And if they do want them, they can go on eBay and buy a disc copy of the game. So, you know, I think that's pretty much what they're doing. Just got texted. From Sky. You spoke to a representative on the 25th of the blah. Was he helpful? Well, to be fair, this was yesterday. And I phoned up specifically because I've paid for... Going off topic here, people. But I paid for... Sky Sports Football and Sky Sports Premier League when my when my package came up for renewal because I had full on Sky Sports but it's because it was on a special offer and I thought well, I don't want the rest of the sports I just want the football so I thought I'll get Premier League I'll get football and that's me covered for the football and then I used the money that would have paid for all the other stuff to pay for BT Sports so that's me pretty much covered for all football apart from the odd football game that pitches up on Prime and so I thought, well, that's me covered. And then yesterday, 
because of all the international games that were on, I noticed that but when you pay for Premier League and football, you don't get Sky Sports main event as a full on channel all the time because Sky Sports main event is basically just showing the the game that they were well, the the program that they've picked specifically from any of the Sky Sports ones will be on Sky Sport main event. And in this particular case, the game that was on Sky Sport main event was that I wanted to see was the Scotland game. But the Scotland game wasn't on any of those other channels. It was only on main event. And I thought, well, how's that going to work? Like, am I not going to be able to watch the Scotland game then? Because I haven't... Got... So I phoned up and the guy said, no, nah, you can't. It's just one of those things. And I was like, what? That's bollocks. So I pay him through the nose for two football channels and I can't watch the Scotland game. Anyway, he told me that, but when it came to watch the time to watch the game, it was available to me on main event because main event it basically comes alive it to me if it's taking if it's if it's showing something from Sky Sports Football or Sky Sports Premier League, and you might think, well, why don't you just watch it on those channels? Well, the answer to that is that a uh, the at the moment, if you want to watch the football with the crowd special effects and stuff, because there's no people in the stadium. You only get those effects on main event. You don't get them on the other channels some of the time. So I tended to tap into main event just for those games. Anyway, it was just one of those things. I thought, that's absolute shite. Like, I can't watch the Scotland game. And ironically, they had a bloody Germany game on the one of the other channels that I could have watched. Anyway, it turned out the guy had told me a falsehood. I, I could absolutely watch it. As, you know, it was just available to me. However, I still can't watch anything that's on Sky Sport main event, even if I'm allowed to watch it on the box, I can't watch it on Sky Go because Sky Go doesn't understand that I'm allowed to watch those programs. Yeah, I can only do, I can only watch it on the Sky Box. So it's worth noting, if you if you are looking at getting just Sky the Sky Football, it's worth noting these little quirks that come with it because they don't bloody tell you any of this. You know, it's like if, if the one game you want to watch is on Sky Sport main event, you can only watch it on the box. You can't watch it on Sky Go. And you happen to be away from home at the time. And you've got your iPad with you. You're fucked. You can't watch it. I couldn't have watched that Scotland game if I'd been away from home trying to watch it on my iPad. Wouldn't have played. So, you know, it's a, it's a really shitty thing to do to people. I'm pretty sure any programmer with half a brain could come up with something that says... That that program is allowed to be viewed on Sky Go because this person has paid for fucking Premier League or whatever. So there's no excuse for it at all, and they just do they just don't go out their way to fix these things for customers because they just try to trap you into spending more money all the time. It's awful. They've always been like that. It's no wonder they they don't get more customers than they should. I mean, if they actually treated people more fairly, I think that they would have a lot more customers than they do. But every at every turn, it's like you're getting creamed for money. And the other one was, <laughs> you got me on my, my, you got me on my, uh, my bandwagon now, people. The other one was that I thought there's three games on at the same time. We've got the Scotland. So I've got next to me, I've got the TV behind this camera. I've got my laptop down here and I, I've got my iPad here. So I thought, oh, I'll stick, I'll stick the Scotland game on the big screen. I'll have the Northern Ireland game on my laptop and I'll have the Germany game on my iPad. I got the first two set up. I went to put the Germany game on the iPad and it went, oh, you're not allowed to do that because you've already got two things on at the same time watching it. So I can only watch on two devices at the same time because they limit you. <laughs> and that is to force you into buying Sky Go Extra, which comes as part of multi-screen, multi-room for the house. I don't need fucking multi-room. I live on my own. <laughs> Fuck's sake. So I'm paying through the nose for all of this football. And if I wanted to have them all on at the same time, I'm not allowed. It's like, well, I'm paying you for it. What's the problem? You know what I mean? It's unbelievable. There's got to be a better way of doing it. I tell you, people, it winds me right up. It really does. Right, anyway, should we get back to the gaming now? Now that I've had a rant, people, should we get back to the gaming? I've sat with my glasses on all day. I do, this is every Friday and everything's just blurry. Um, let's have a look. Where are we? PSVR we've done. Yeah, so the stores are closing. It'd be very interesting to see if the PSVR, uh, the PS3, Vita and PSP, if they do happen to come up with something where you can you can do all of these things somewhere else like the PS5 or what have you. But it's very interesting. The Vita's an interesting one. And, you know, because it's not like you can... Uh, the, yeah, the Vita, you can buy the little cartridges, but they that is absolutely an item that is begging just to be able to download your games. So it's interesting for that, certainly. We'll see what happens with it. Hopefully, maybe, maybe we'll get a little bit of compact thing coming out of 
Sony, it'd be nice, it'd be nice. But I just don't see it. I just don't see where they would want to do it from because it, it kind of defuncts the whole PlayStation Now thing. Microsoft possibly buying Discord. Well, here's the thing, right? I've opened it. I've, I've created a Discord account. And anyone who was watching the streams over the New Year and Christmas would have seen that it would pop in with my Discord name and stuff in one of these real things I've got going on for YouTube, Discord, you know, Twitter. And uh, to be honest with you, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what it's for. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Now, well, I say that. I know that it's for... Uh, you can. And it, it sounds to me like you can do video group chatting and, and voice group chatting and all this sort of stuff. But I just, like, when I looked at it, I thought, well, the, how does this thing work? I couldn't even figure out how to create anything or do <laughs> And to be fair, I only spent about two minutes with it. This could be the old man in me coming, people. Ye old gamer. I mean, I reach level 50 next month, people. Jesus Christ. So, yeah. So, anyway, apparently, uh, where were we? It was something like $10 billion. Apparently, Microsoft are eyeing up a $10 billion buyout of Discord. And, I mean, it's. I think it's brilliant. Because the way that this thing is being used from everything else I'm, I'm hearing and podcasts and watching and stuff, people are using Discord all the time to generate parties, chat to other people. You know, if you're on a different platform than somebody else, you can, you can chat via Discord with them. And, you know, all of this sort of stuff. And I really need to figure out for myself as to how I can make better use of it, to be fair. Uh, especially for the community, for the channel, maybe. I know a few of you in the past have asked me if I got a Discord ca account, and you know, well, I have now. I haven't done anything with it, but it's there and it's live, you know. So, yeah, it's an interesting one, but I mean, I wouldn't surprise me at all if that happened to be a deal that happened. I think a Amazon and somebody else were also looking at it, and I think the market value is about seven billion. But I think the the reason Microsoft are throwing a ten billion price tag out there is because they are basically saying to the competition, "You ain't going to get that. We're going to buy that. We're going to pay through the nose for it and well over the odds and and what have you." Apparently, it was Discord that approached Microsoft after the other two had approached them to say, "Would you be interested?" And I think that's pretty clever from them because by far Discord is is far more suited to a gaming company than it is the other two companies that are looking at it. I mean, you know, it it is be a perfect and a absolutely brilliant thing to be able to plug into the xbox systems and communities and you know i'm pretty sure if they bought something as big as that i i can't see them limiting it to just you know xboxes and, and pcs or whatever i think it would still be a service that was available to everybody they might just make it a lot easier they might they might integrate it into the interface that you get with the xbox series x's and stuff you know so it'd be quite cool it'd be very cool if they managed to push it through uh, the people that created Discord will be, you know, off on their yacht sailing around the world. <laughs> yeah, Xbox Live has now been renamed to Xbox Network. And I'm not... Initially, I was watching another... I was watching the IGN Unlocked podcast the other day. And Dustin Legary came up with a good point. And he was saying that... Because I was a bit similar to everyone else. I was like, why would you ruin a brand that's been around for so long? Xbox Live is just... You know, everybody knows what it is. But the fact of the matter is, like, if you look at if, if someone's coming into the into the industry fresh as a new gamer or whatever, and you you look at the word Xbox Live, the word live means something very different than it did 19 years ago when they first created that system. You know, live means broadcasting, streaming, all sorts of different things. So I think from their perspective, I think going forward, Xbox Network will make far much more sense once we all wrap on brains around the fact that it's not called live anymore and xbox live may well in the future be used for something else name wise and so i think it's fine i think it's a bit of a you know a knee-jerk reaction from a lot of people going oh it's just rubbish why would you ruin that brand i think it's a it may it is it does make a lot of sense to be fair it's called playstation network isn't it so <laughs> copyright the miniature copyright playstation going you know so yeah no it's fine i don't see a problem with that i don't, I don't if anyone is having a hoo-ha about it Calm down. Move on. It's fine. It's only, it's only the word live replaced with the word network. You know what I mean? We can get we can get our heads around it, people. Gotham Knights delayed until 2022. Yeah, well, uh, Batman Gotham Knights, or uh, is it called Batman Gotham? No, it's just called Gotham Knights. Because it's, it's the, the whole point of the game is that Batman's not in it. It's not made by Rocksteady, obviously. It's made by the, the company that did Origins, 
which was the one game not made by. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, the the, the footage that we've seen uh, a while back at uh, uh, some ceremony or other or some event or other, it looked absolutely fantastic. But you know, a game like that, it, it looks like it's going to be massively open. You've got four main characters instead of one. You've got you know your Batgirls and your Robins and your your all sorts in it, and is it Nighthawk and oh, I can't remember now. But you've got four characters in it anyway, and. Uh, we're still to see how that game's going to work, how the story's going to pan out, how you play with other people, you know, like... But it looks very, very cool. It looked fantastic visually. And, you know, if you need more time as a dev, I don't think anyone's going to... I think people will understand, you know, during these COVID times and the year that we've just had, that things need to be delayed. I wish... I wish Cyberpunk had had the same thing. You know, I know people were getting annoyed with them because they kept delaying it. But if they'd just said, look, we need another year and it will be out next year and just got on with it. I think people would have been far happier with that product in the end than the damage that's been done by releasing a game that clearly wasn't ready for console anyway at all. If you played it on a high-end PC, you've been fine. Uh, even on the uh, even on the new consoles, it, it wasn't ready. Like it play it plays well enough, you know, visually, but there's so many bugs in the AI and stuff that it's just, you know, even, well even the PC's got bugs in the AI and stuff, but you know, if, if 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 a dev needs more time, and they've done it with Halo, they've went, nah, you're not having it this year. We're going to give you it next year after the backlash there was at the the showing it showing it off. So I, I don't see any problem with with delaying the game, and I don't think anyone's sat on the edge of their seat, you know, demanding that game anyway. It'll be a big hit and it'll be popular, but I don't think it's going to be something people are too bothered that they're going to have to wait another year for at all. You know, if you're a de- if you're any dev, take the time you need to make your game, you know. A, 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 you can you only got one chance to make that game awesome on day one one chance and if you fuck it up like cyberpunk did people will forgive cyberpunk to a point because they know what they're capable of and they know that they'll stick with that game until it's fixed properly but still you know there's an awful lot of people that got their refunds from xbox because it on the base systems it was just bloody awful they should, in my opinion, they should maybe have just released it for PC and said consoles will get it next year or something because it was just, I mean, it was just awful management. I don't know what that was all about. Alien Fire Team, we keep seeing more and more things about this. My, now, here's an interesting one because the the article that I read said that Aliens Fire Team was being built by a lot of people that had been soaked in the RPG world of development. So there is a lot of RPG elements thrown into this game. But the more I read the article, I thought, really, though? You know, because it is an online experience by the looks of it. There is a story, I think, and there is a, there is law behind it because they were talking about all of that as well. And it's set 23 years after the original Alien and Aliens. Uh, well, no, it's set 23 years after... Mm, now, that's interesting. I can't remember what it said now. I thought it said Alien... Oh, well, maybe not. 23 years after Aliens I've got here. Because remember, there's a massive, massive time jump from when Alien ends and when she's discovered, isn't there? It's like, is it not 50 years or something she was floating in space? So I think it's 23 years after Aliens, I think. And so there is, you know, lore and and stuff going on behind that and, and what's happening in that universe and everything. So I don't know how much cam, well, how much campaign slash story we're going to get. Or if it's just going to be a surrounding sort of, you know, that's all kind of going on while you're just running around shooting stuff for your mates. But they did say that there's a lot of RPG elements in the game, but they didn't really expand too much on it. But they they, they then talked about how many weapon choices you have and upgrades you have and all that sort of stuff. So whether or not they're talking about RPG just on the upgradable stuffs or whether they're talking about looting and I don't know. So we'll have to wait and see, I guess. And I've not seen, I've only seen a little bit of the footages of, of that game. And there was nothing in it that was making me go, well, I've got to play that. To be fair, every Alien game has been a massive disappointment, apart from Alien Isolation, which is a great game. But it's very much the creep about, stay hidden type game. You know, it's it's a horror game that. It's like, don't get caught by the alien or you're going to die. And that's, you know realistically that's what alien was all about i mean ripley was just superb but <laughs> if you if you're one on one with an alien you're not going to win are you unless you've got a machine gun or what have you you might take down one 
but they'd have to have a full army of people trying. I mean, look at what happened in Aliens, man. They get absolutely annihilated. So I think like having a game where you're just running around slaughtering loads of aliens, I'm not, I'm not overly sure how repetitive it's going to get, and then it just becomes a bit dull. Alien versus Predator was one that was a bit like that, and you know, the Alien Colonial Marines, which was in development for a gazillion years and then was awful. I mean, there, there just hasn't been a decent Alien game apart from Alien Isolation, really. So I don't, I did, but I did buy Alien versus Predator, but I never finished it. it kind of one of those okay games i suppose but it wasn't you know i think it was like a five out of ten or something at the time it wasn't great i think i had bishop in it though to be fair to it ledge the ledge that is bishop a 4k switch is still being talked about people there's more and more rumors appearing about this 4k switch that might be happening coming this holiday and i think it's a for me i would have been more excited if they've said it was going to be a 60 fps switch i th- I, th- I don't i don't see how 4k benefits playing on a little tiny screen like that so the 4k is only going to be a benefit if you're actually putting it on your big screen for me if you can have all of your all of your games with 60 fps on the handheld minimum then great if you can stick them on the big screen at 4K, great. Or can you play it on the big screen, but at 1080p, 60 FPS, then maybe. But I mean, I doubt it, <laughs> you know. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I think I'd, I'd prefer to see 60 FPS on a Switch rather than 4K. Now that I've played all of these, I'm playing all of these games that I'm playing at 60 FPS. I'm not playing any games at 30 frames per second now. And I actually switched fallout 4 back off camera back to 30 frames per second 4k and my eyes were just like jesus christ it is so like honestly the difference is just unbelievable anybody that picks 4k 30 frames per second over 1080p or 1440p at 60 frames per second is missing out on on an experience that's just mind-blowing like the difference, like is just incredible. Like the smoothness and the cl- the clarity of the. I've talked about this before. I I believe you get more clarity out of sixty FPS than you do out of four K. Everything is just so. It's just so crisp and clear. There's no you know jitteriness and speckling going on because it's just panning so beautifully. And I uh, I will take and I'll say it again and I'll say it a million times from now. 60 fps above 4k every day of the week every day of the week it's far more beautiful but nonetheless uh, a 4k switch is being rumored for holidays 2021 i think whatever they do with a, a switch pro if you want to call it that or what have you is going to be a massive hit and people will buy it i know aaron broom and my son will buy it he adores playing on the nintendo and uh, on the switch just loves that environment but you know we'll see what happens i haven't touched my switch for about a year so, you know, I, I just can't be doing with the, when I want to play it on the big screen, it's just not smooth enough. Like even Zelda was just, I just found it too sticky and it's a great game. It's a beautiful game. Too sticky and the, the, the stupid weapon system. Fighting with twigs all the time, you know what I mean? Bigger screen, what was it? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, sorry. Apparently, the bigger screen, as I've got written down there. But, yes, apparently, the, the new Switch will have a bigger screen. It doesn't say how big, but, you know, the rumors are bigger screen and 4K for, the you know, the handheld. So, yeah, it'll be a hit. Whatever they do with it will be a hit. It's a massive hit already. But they have to do something to keep up with what's happening, though, because they're so far behind. I mean, the Switch, the Switch was only playing, you know... I mean, I know they managed to get things like The Witcher and stuff playing on it, but not well. You know what I mean? I mean, you're talking about really bad frame rates and really cut back imagery and, and what have you. And, you know, things like Skyrim, you know, they're not new games. They're bloody two generations old. Like, they're already, like, if you want the new games that devs are writing to be on your system, you've got to keep the power going up in the thing or it's just going to become redundant other than your own first party stuff. So they need that. They need the power of the switch to start increasing without any shadow of a doubt. Bigger screen is never a bad thing, though. The new Xbox headset. Ooh, it looks a little bit sexy, doesn't it? Now, I've got the I've got the PlayStation headset, official one, as I've shown you in our previous podcast or vlog. 
and it's great. It's really, really nice. Uh, I really like it. But I think the way that they've designed the Xbox One is a little bit better so far as it still gets 3D audio. It's, uh, apparently the bass in it's really, really good and you can alter that. There's a way to alter all these settings in the new update for the console coming out soon, if it's not out already. And, you know, you can it, it really intricately change all of the ways that, you know, less bass, more bass, treble, you know, and really tweak it to the way you want the sound to be. And depending on the game, obviously, you'll get the 3D audio options and stuff. But the way they've designed the actual headset is really cool because, like, a lot of headsets, the, the PlayStation one's really good, but it you've got a try and remember where the buttons are when you're using it it's like which one was the volume up and which one was the mic up and which you know it and inevitably you get it bloody wrong and you're fumbling about what they've done that's really cool on the xbox one is they've made the earbuds twist that the, the sort of end of them twistable so all you need to do to turn the volume up is just twist the outside and if you want to turn the mic and mic up and down it's twist the other side i mean that's fantastic you know there'll be i'm sure there'll be a button or two here and there well well in fact if you want to mute all you do is just pick the microphone you just lift the mic up and push it back and it mutes it off and then pull it back down and you can talk again so it's all really simple and the you know i mean i really i mean i'm i nearly bought a pair and then i couldn't get hold of them they're, they're sold out everywhere but the minute they come available i'll be getting a, another nice stand like i did for the playstation where i got a nice wooden stand i showed you in a podcast in the past i think a vlog i'll get another stand and i'll stick it down here by where the the other ones are and i'll just be able to lift between the two at the moment and i can use those for recording for the channel as well because the the xbox doesn't cut off the sound when you record through another device elgato being mine but the playstation the minute you use a well no sorry it's if you use a us if you use a usb dongle to do your sound through the console on the playstation it cuts the sound off from the elgato but it doesn't do that on the xbox on top of which there's no dongle for these headphones so you can there's some really cool features in this there's no dongle for it so you can just sync it straight to the Xbox. And if you want to use it on anything else, it's also got Bluetooth, it's just standard Bluetooth that will connect to anything. So what you can do is you can you can connect to your Xbox and have your game going, but you can also connect to your phone and have your Discord coming through or your music coming through, and you can have you can be connected to two devices. Absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. Really good design of, of headphones, you know, considering they are I think eighty nine pound in this country or something like that, and hundred dollars or wherever you know in America. So yeah, really really impressive. I, I can't wait to get my hands on a pair. Obviously, I've got my Turtle Beaches that are the top end Turtle Beach ones that I use globally for sound for recording on the channel, and they're really good headphones. But I can't really experience the 3D with them because I don't have 3D in them, and also. The, the way that I get the sound to them is through the TV optical. So I've got my consoles going into my TV and then I've got the optical from the TV going at the headphones. And I think that somewhat diminishes the experience you get sound-wise from the console rather than getting it from the console directly. So it'd be very cool if I can start getting A, 3D sound out of these consoles and B, be able to get the, the full you know the full sensation of the sound that's coming from the console rather than it being filtered through the the tv so i'm really i'm really looking forward to it and i was really enjoying like anytime i was playing off camera i was using the playstation ones rather than the turtle beaches and they were the sound was really good the you know just the the way that they're designed with this big gap sort of they go over your ear and there's quite a lot of space between the your ear and the, you know it just sounds very it's, i mean you literally like feel like there's things happening around you you know, and that's on games that really weren't designed for 3D sound or anything. Like, you know, it's just really, really good. So, yeah, very impressed with it. And it did seem a bit clearer that it was coming straight from the PS5. So, yeah, yeah, really looking forward. The minute I can get my hands on a pair of those Xbox headphones, I'll be getting those. Lord of the Rings Gollum has raised its head again. I saw another trailer for that. And I... Uh, I don't know, like, I mean, it looks beautiful enough and you feel that vibe of the world and everything, but I just don't know what to think. I don't know what to think of that game. Like, whenever I think of Lord of the Rings, I'm always thinking about, you know, bows and arrows and axes and swords and battles. And, you know, I get that they're doing something different. I just don't know what 
will be interesting about it. You can only assume it's a stealth game. You can only assume it's a sneak and a, you know, that sort of stuff. And it may well be it's it's brilliant. But I just, every time I see it, I think, mm, not sure. However, I do, what I have noticed is it does look, Gollum looks very like the movie version. The sound, the, the sound of his voice, I'm not sure if it's Andy Serkis, but it certainly sounds like Andy Serkis's voice. So, you know, it does seem like it is depicting itself from the movies because everything looks like it did in the movies. And Gollum even looks like he does in the movies. So, as sounds like it. So it's going to be very interesting to see just what that game is. Like, what are you doing when you're walking through this world? Because they did say that you also get to meet up with, you know, characters from that world and stuff on occasion and all this sort of stuff. So it's just going to be very interesting. Maybe it'll turn out just to be a basic story thing where you're just walking through the world and this story is being told to you and you do some interesting puzzly things and that while you walk through it. It'd be interesting to see what it is. But yeah, it's just an odd direction to take with it. But maybe it just... Because the, like the ones that were done, the action ones that were done from the films... I mean, I love those games. I've got them. I've got the PS2 upstairs. I could bring it down. I could play those games if I wanted to. But they are dated now. And to have something that would, you know, be an ubered up version of them would be amazing. So there's so many ways they could have gone with the Lord of the Rings. I don't think it's ever a franchise that's going to tire itself out. I mean, there's already an Amazon Lord of the Rings TV series coming, isn't there? I mean, it's it's going to be, a, you know, one of those worlds that's forever tapped into. I think there's an MMO. Is there not an MMO coming out as well, or some sort of RPG? Yeah, I think there is. So I don't know. It's just an interesting path to take. But then you know, everyone else has taken the obvious path before, so maybe it will just turn out to be a very cool idea. I will, of course, have tried to find the footage that I'm talking about to show up behind me as we go with these. Bio Mutant Combat trailer was also shown off, and I, I'm I'm kind of curious about that game as well. I mean, I. I actually, the more I see of that game, the more I think that's right up my street, that is. And it's just the way that they've done the action and the the character looks really cool and cute. And the world looks really strange and bizarre and interesting. And the way that it fights, you've got this sort of kapow, bang, splat sort of stuff flying off things when you're hitting them. And you've got all of these weird creatures everywhere. And I don't know, the world looks gorgeous as well. So I am really, really curious about that game. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the... I'm trying to think now. For some reason, I've got May in my head for that game. But it might be something else I was talking about I saw a May date for. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super curious about that game. And I think it might be something that's well up my street. And it might well be something that is good for the channel to do some recording for you guys on. And yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think of Biomutant. Because I, I, I think some of you have commented on it before. But the more I see of that game, the more I think this looks really cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I'm trying to remember that. What was that Wukong one as well? That they keep it keeps coming out of the woodwork constantly. That uh, what was it called? Something Wukong, the Chinese one or Japanese one? Was it Chinese or Japanese? I can't remember. But it looks incredible that one as well. I mean, that's you know nowhere near being launched, but that looks amazing. There's so many, there's so many good good games being banded about. The, the next few years we're just going to be so spoiled. It's unbelievable. I think and. Octopath Traveler, which was a Switch exclusive. And if you don't know what the game is, if you can just imagine a world that is like the original Final Fantasy game worlds, you know, like you played back in the PS2 and stuff, but much sort of more 3D in their design. And then you've got sort of 16-bit versions of the characters sort of beautifully worked out and stuff. And the battle system is very Final Fantasy. The, the style of it is very Final Fantasy and there's loads of different characters with different stories to play. Beautiful game, won, won loads of awards. But it's not only come to Xbox, but it's gone straight to Xbox Game Pass as well. So you can, if you've got Xbox Game Pass, I would absolutely advise you to go and play that game. Uh, now, I haven't finished it, surprise, surprise, but when I played it on the the switch i did get quite heavily into it and i did quite a lot and it gets dark in places and you end up in a bloody whorehouse and everything <laughs> like i saved this girl and she's getting beaten down by the guy that owns it and he's like a right nasty piece of work he's not afraid to get dark that game you know it looks cute on the outside but it's quite dark in the middle so yeah that's that's hit the that's hit xbox games pass which is absolutely fantastic 
I couldn't recommend that game enough. If you if you like a bit of JRPG and you know looking for a, something to play and you've got Games Pass, absolutely. If you haven't if you haven't touched that game before, go and have a look at that. I'd be interested to see what the trophies are because obviously Switch don't have trophies either. So I think Octopath Traveler is also it's I think it's also come to PlayStation, has it? I don't think it was just exclusive to going to Xbox. I think it was coming to both consoles, but they have put it on Games Pass, which I thought was superb. It's a terrific game to slap on Games Pass, absolutely. Also, a terrific game to play if they have done or can do, get it onto the xCloud and have people playing it on their mobile devices as well. And that sort of thing, streaming it down the way. So here's the here's the topic. Well, here's the, the topic that I was leaving till the end. It dawned on me today, like, I can't... The more I'm doing this recording for you guys with the 60 FPS, and the more that I just can't bring myself to play a game at 30 FPS anymore, I was wondering, like, why... Why haven't more developers already come up with a patch for their games to run at 60 FPS in the new consoles? Because it's a it's the best bit of fresh air you can give your games to make people that haven't played them before start buying them, or make people that you know used to have the game buy it again if they had it on disc. But there's there is just so many, or get people into your world again and ready for your next game because it's just such a prime candidate for. You know, leave everything the same and just get the 60 FPS slapped on it. I mean, I think two good examples are, you know, Divinity Original Sin and Divinity Original Sin 2, both of which are 30 FPS, both of which are fantastic games. But when I did a couple of recordings on Divinity Original Sin 2 on the, the Xbox, when it Series X, just to see, see how it ran, it was capped at 30, so there was no great benefit to it. And I could see it, you know, after playing 60 FPS games, I was like, even in that top ta- top down style of game, I just thought this would be so glorious in 60 FPS. And I just don't understand, especially with a company like that, who's got the next Baldur's Gate, you know, they're making the next Baldur's Gate. You think, well, when these systems were on the horizon, all of these p- people have had, you know, the, the dev kits and stuff. It would have made perfect sense to me that you say, right, take four members of the team. I want you to go and get that that game or those two games running at 60 fps on those two consoles and then once you're done you can come back and join the rest of the team for doing whatever you know to do with the new game and i don't think like i mean i'm not a developer i am i am a i am a programmer but i I don't program games but i don't think that it would have taken much of a reach to get those games you know tweaked and sorted for 60 fps on something that's able to cream out uh you know more power so I'm just, I don't understand why more companies aren't leaping onto it. Bloodborne's another one. Why is Bloodborne not leaping at the chance to be 60 FPS? Or, I mean, there's just so many titles from last generation that would just benefit from having, you know, I know Microsoft are doing the FPS boost thing, but it's not, you know, you, you could go further with it if the devs did a bit of tweaking. Like, there's no doubt in my mind, I don't think, that if if Bethesda got their heads right into Fallout 4 and just gave it a proper good patch in that we could have possibly 1440p with 60 fps rather than having to drop right down to 1080p don't get me wrong i'd rather have 1080p than 4k and have it like bloody skyrim is which is just sticking all over the place because it just should not be at 4k 60 but and i still don't understand why they've done that with skyrim and not done that with fallout like just bring Skyrim down to 1080p for 60 FPS because it looks bloody awful the way that it is. <laughs> so, anyway, the yeah, I I just don't know why more devs aren't tapping into that, uh, that tapping into tweaking their game to run at 60 FPS uh, to gain the benefit of people who haven't played the games before buying them. You know what I mean? Like the Divinity, the, the Divinity Original Sin first one. I mean, there's going to be loads of people that have never played that game. I mean, it's like the, the age of the console now, isn't it? I mean, they, that came out well early days of the PS4. There's going to be people that, you know, so many gamers in the have come into adulthood that wouldn't have played those games as kids or whatever would probably touch them now, RPG fans and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm boggled. My mind's boggling as to why more developers aren't leaping onto the let's get our existing library of games on a 60 FPS on these uber consoles i mean it just seems like a a no-brainer to me it's just a win-win it's a win for us it's a win for them because people will start buying the game again because it gets more attention because it's got this patch i mean the minute 
the minute a game gets a patch it's for 60 fps it is all over youtube <laughs> you couldn't ask for more free advertising you know what i mean especially if you're making a new game patch the ones you've got and say well we've got these up and this one's coming as well it's like free advertising you know all of us guys that throw this the stuff up on youtube and you you we don't even charge you for it you're welcome <laughs> I mean, I uh, it baffles me brain, people. It really does. Let me know in the comments below if you think I'm talking out me bottom. But, you know, I think it's a no-brainer for me. It really is. Oh, there you are. I feel like I've rambled long enough, people. We'll be going for 50 minutes or thereabouts. Ooh, flagons up to you once again. It went down a bit nicely, that one, to be fair. Well, there you are. I have, in fact, run out of things to say. I will continue to record more things for you on Sunday, as I say. And to recap, I think I'll probably do Skyrim first because you didn't get any Skyrim this week. So I'll try and do three or four Skyrims. Probably on Sunday, try and record those. And then they were posted up through the week. And then I'll try and do one of the others. And, you know, as I said last time, you know, I'll be doing recording a bunch of Skyrims one night, a bunch of Fallouts the next, a bunch of uh, Immortals the next, and so on. If I can manage a fourth night, then I'll do a bunch of something else the next night. So, but I tell you, much as I'm loving Phoenix Rising, I'm looking at it and it's like 30, episode 38 am I on now? And, you know, I'm thinking I've still got like an, I haven't even done half of the map yet. <laughs> So I can, I can well, the way I'm playing it, I mean, I could well see that being 100 episodes. And to be fair, I'm getting plenty of thumbs ups for it. But the the amount of people watching that is not anywhere near as high as the amount of people that are watching the other stuff. And I, I don't want the channel to suffer because I'm sticking with a game that isn't very popular. But then by the same token, I don't want to not play it because I feel like I'm letting the people down that are watching it. So it's a difficult one for me. It really is. But But I'm loving it. I'm mean, love it. Every time I get back into that game, I just adore it. And, you know, I'm loving Fallout at 60 FPS. I'm loving Skyrim at 60 FPS on the PS5. So, you know, and we're going to have new games coming sooner rather than later, people. So it's all good. So there you are. That is all I have for you this week, people. I hope that has been of help to someone hearing some of that news. I hope it's been company to other people. I've certainly had a nice time. It's therapy. As I say, this is therapy for me, just chatting into the camera. <laughs> If I talk any longer, I'll be rambling for no reason. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in this vlog of mine. And I'll catch you in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.